I'm happy to see you back at Rich Kids Online. I'm John, and as always, I'm excited to be hosting Rich Kids Online. Here with me today are two of my favorite sisters, Sally and Joni. We all miss seeing you in person, but we love that we can meet together online. We look forward to getting together every week and to playing the Minute to Win It games. <laughs> well, get excited because we have a great game for you today. Today's game is Hurry Up. You will each get two pencils. You will need to balance both pencils on top of your hand. And when the timer starts, you have to toss the pencils up in the air and catch them both with the, with the same hand, one-handed before they hit the ground. That sounds like quite the challenge. It is going to require a lot of dexterity. Yes, and it goes against our mother's favorite saying, pencils are to write with, not play with. True. <laughs> All right, ladies, enough talk. Let's get to our game. All right, ladies, are you ready? I'm ready. On your mark, get set. Go! Oh wow! Oh, both of you start off with one each. Two. Wow! Oh. Uh oh. Three. Uh oh. Joni's on a roll. Oh. Yep. That was my catch up. Here we go. Oh, she's catching up. Two. Four. Four to three right now. Bye. You're at 30 seconds, ladies. Okay. Oh, nope. One, two, Uh-oh. Sally's taking off. Six. Ooh. Ooh. with the top stick catch. Sorry. 45 seconds. Five, four, oh. three, two, one. It's oh. over. Good Eleven. job, Sally. 11. What'd you end up with, Joni? Eight. Good wow. job, Joni. That was great. You all. Good job. I thought I would go. <laughs> Wow, way to go, Sally. Good Thank job. Thank you. Now it's your turn. Pause this video and gather your supplies. If you don't have pencils, you can use pens or crayons. When you restart the video, there will be a timer for your Minute to Win It challenge. I hope you enjoyed the game and set a new record. Now it's time to move on to the real reason you tuned in, our Bible story for today. Joni, would you like to do a short review before we watch our video for today? I would love to. Israel had entered the Promised Land, but God's people repeatedly turned from Him. When they did, He allowed their enemies to defeat them. When they remembered God and asked Him for help, He sent judges to rescue them. Last week, we learned about how God used Deborah, Barak, and Jael to rescue his people. Sadly, that was not the last time they would be sinned against God and be overtaken by their enemies. Mm. That's right, Joni. Today, we will hear what happened when God raised up a man named Gideon to deliver his people from the nation of Midian. Let's watch together. The Israelites once again did not obey God so God allowed them to be ruled by their enemies, the Midianites. The Midianites were cruel to Israel. They took Israel's food and animals. The Israelites remembered how good life was when they loved and obeyed God. They cried out to God, save us. The angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak tree. He appeared to a man named Gideon and said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon, 
was afraid. His family was the weakest family in his tribe, and he was the youngest son in the family. But the Lord had chosen Gideon to deliver the Israelites from the power of their enemy. The Lord assured Gideon, I will be with you. When the time came to go to battle, Gideon blew a ram's horn. An army of men gathered behind Gideon ready to fight. Gideon wanted a sign from God. He prayed, I will put fleece on the ground. If the fleece is wet with dew, but the ground is dry, I will believe you will deliver Israel as you say. That is exactly what happened. The fleece was so wet that Gideon squeezed enough water out to fill a bowl. But Gideon asked for another sign. This time, the fleece was dry and the ground was wet. God told Gideon that he had too many people with him. Gideon sent home everyone who was afraid to fight. 10,000 men remained. That's still too many, God said. God made a test for the people. All of them were to go to the river to drink the water. Anyone who knelt to drink water was sent home. But whoever lapped the water with his hand to his mouth stayed. 300 men remained. That night, Israel's armies carried torches, blew their trumpets, and shattered pitchers. They ran toward the camp of Midianites. Gideon and his army chased the Midianites, and they ran away. God gave Israel the victory. The Israelites said, Gideon, you rescued us. Now we want you to be our king. Gideon said, no, God will rule over you. But after Gideon died, the Israelites once again ignored God and forgot about him, who had delivered them from the power of their enemies. The Israelites cried out to God because they knew they could not save themselves. Even Gideon was not enough to save them. God used Gideon to help his people, but God fought the battle for them. The people needed someone who was mighty to save. Jesus Christ came to save us from sin because we cannot save ourselves. Only God through Christ can save us. Well, I can't say that I didn't expect this. God's people turned away from God again. They chose to worship false gods and do what seemed right to themselves without paying attention to what God had told them was right. What happened next showed more of the pattern. Enemies came in and took over, and after a while, the people of Israel remembered how much they needed God. They cried out to Him, and He sent Gideon to rescue them from Midian. I love this story because it is such a reminder of God's faithfulness, but also of God's power. God did not choose the strongest man from the most powerful family. He chose the youngest man from a weak family. God did not ask thousands and thousands of Israelites to fight against the army of Midian. Instead, God made Gideon's army smaller and smaller. God was going to prove that it isn't human strength that wins the day. God showed Gideon that victory comes from him. You are right, John. You see, if Gideon had charged into battle with bigger, stronger army and won, the people might have said something like, you know, God is okay, but we won because we are great fighters and powerful warriors. We don't need God, we have a big, huge army. Yeah. That would be a foolish thing to believe. The Israelites cried out to God because they knew they could not save themselves. Even Gideon was not enough to save them. God used Gideon to help his people, but God fought the battle for them. Yeah. I need God, and I am so glad He chose to save me. Let's sing a worship song together.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna great way to glorify God. The game, video, and worship has been a great way to spend some time together. I enjoy being able to meet up each week online. Sally and Joni, our time together is coming to a close. Any announcements we should know about? Well, you should be finishing up your summer devotional. We hope you have enjoyed geocaching as much as Joni and I have. Remember to pray for Shanice in Haiti and Jeffrey in Kenya and all the missionaries who are out spreading the gospel. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together. We look forward to seeing you again online next week. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for your faithfulness to your people. And we thank you today that our strength is not found in ourselves or how big our group is, Lord, but our strength is found in you. Lord, we pray for Shanice and Jeffrey and their families. We pray that you would take care of them and all the missionaries around the world. Lord, we love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. Video sticker collecting water bottles. It's all happening this summer during our Bridge Kids Devo Got Fruit. I'm Noah. I'm Chloe. And we are so excited to be your host all summer long for Got Fruit. Each Monday, tune in for a fun demonstration to kick off your week of learning about the fruit of the Spirit. Chloe will give you a little explanation each week, and then we will do an awesome demonstration. These are going to be sweet. Yep, it's going to be a fun summer. See you soon.